Andre Carpathia and his team at Tesla are seemingly about to work a near miracle, getting Teslas to true autonomous vehicle status, where cars can truly drive themselves under most circumstances. This is amazing, earth-shattering news that makes the moon landing look downright simple. This group of AI researchers must be about the best in the world right now, and this is something that even Elon Musk has proudly talked about. But will this very success lead to Tesla's downfall from the pinnacle of practical AI research? I think it might. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I wanna take just a little moment to give myself a pat on the back here. I believe I was the first person to come up with Tesla Vision on March 24th. You can catch the video up here. It seems to be the term for the state of the art now, which is the new version of full self-driving that does not require radar anymore. So anyway, I don't want anything for it except for just a little pat on the back. Or if you have evidence that somebody else was calling it that before me, well then definitely let me know in the comments and I will back off on that. Anyway, onto something much more important than that. And that is that it it really seems like the non-radar versions of the automobiles, which is the Model 3 and Model Y, that have been delivered since approximately late May, apparently, have problems. It seems like they've been rushed to market without the radar. There is a lot of evidence that the global chip shortage has caused a problem with Tesla's supply chain logistics, and that what they did was they removed that from the North American market, which is the US and Canada. I don't believe it's Mexico also. But anyway, they removed it from that market, which is a very, very large market, in order to save on parts, which they were having problems getting. So as far as I know, the Model S, the Model X, and all of the cars in the rest of the world are still using radar. But what this does is removes, let's say, 250, 300,000 ish vehicles that do not need radar anymore. Now, why do I say this looks like it was rushed to market? Well, a lot of stories have cropped up in cars that were released without radar, and in rain situations, they are not behaving very well. Now, of course, Tesla also said that the car would be limited to 75 miles per hour max, the follow distance would be longer, and that it also would not do smart summon as well. I believe those are the three main things that it said it wouldn't do. But users since then have driven the car, and anytime there's a reasonable amount of rain, the car does not behave well, as might be expected. Again, if you think about our vision, if you drive in a reasonably heavy rain, it's difficult to do that. And of course, the car is released in the Northern Hemisphere, so there's not going to be an awful lot of snow this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. I have a feeling it's going to have a very difficult time with snow, but it's going to probably be, you know, October before we actually start to see people experience heavy snow in the United States and Canada again. But anyway, I would contend it's pretty obvious that this feature, <laughs> removing the radar, has actually been rushed to market. It should have been something that they should have maybe done six months from now when the technology was a little more mature. But whatever the case, they're obviously all in. They're committed to doing full self-driving without radar at this point. So that's where they are. All right, so what about the title of this video? Why am I saying that Tesla's success in AI might kill Tesla's success in AI? Well, the basic problem is this. Essentially, what Tesla has done is they've gotten together some of the most brilliant minds in the world in AI research or practical AI research or computer vision or whatever area you, you want to narrow that down to. But anyway, these are not just smart people. They are brilliant people and they are incredibly motivated people and they're the kind of people that change the world. And guess what? The problem is if they're really this close to solving full self-driving, like basically Andre Carpathy is saying now that the neural network model, which has now become the basis of the entire full self-driving stack, and you can see some videos I've done on that up here if you're interested, but basically what he's saying is that they've got that stack pretty well written and it's working properly, etc., and that most of their job right now is data wrangling. In other words, what they're trying to do is take the billions of miles, approximately 22 billion-ish miles, of driving data from the Tesla fleet, and they're trying to process that in a way that's efficient and actually brings up edge cases so that they can train on that specifically. And so if you start to think about that, here you've got a problem in fundamental research. How do you drive a car by itself? That is a really interesting and challenging problem, and it has taken years, right? Tesla's been working on this since, oh gosh, I think 2012 or something like that was when they first announced that. That was well before Andre Carpathy was on board. But anyway, so they've been working on that for let's say a decade-ish, right? Right? So this is a long-term problem. It's a problem that's been worked on by other researchers since at least the 1990s that I can remember. So this is an ongoing thing. It's an incredibly complicated problem, and it's an incredibly important problem for safety and for convenience and for the good of the world, etc. The problem is, if this thing is really solved, right? If Andre Carpathy et al. and Elon Musk seems to believe that this is true, and I think Andre Carpathy does too, that this is all but solved. It's basically down to training this on better data 
and more data and refined data and finding those edge cases. Well, the problem is you've got all these incredible, super motivated people that want to change the world. And what they're doing right now is data wrangling and refining. And let me tell you, you know, from doing my own work, the research part is really interesting. And then getting to that part where you have to like just deal with all the stupid little details and try to refine it and make it work better, that's a lot more boring. The, the initial aha moment when you actually solve the problem and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to work, that is amazing. And working towards that is amazing. And these people have been working really hard towards that. My fear right now is that they're going to say like, well, we've essentially solved the problem. We can turn this over to a second tier group of AI researchers and go off and do something else to change the world. What that is, I don't know. Maybe it's CRISPR, maybe it's gene editing, you know, something like that. But whatever that thing is, these people are going to be highly motivated to leave Tesla very, very soon if they aren't already. And so then the question becomes, what does Elon Musk and what do Tesla do to retain these people? Because you can't replace these people, right? This is not like you can go out and just hire a, another couple of hundred or dozen or whatever it is that you want. You can't just pick a number and say, we're gonna go out and hire this group of people. These are top of the line people. They're the best in the world. You want to keep them at all costs to keep working on things. So in my thinking, Elon Musk and Tesla, if they're not doing this already, they better damn well be doing it soon. They better be thinking really, really long and hard about what the next big AI challenge is, especially something in computer computer vision or something. And I don't know if that's something that's internal to the car and making the car better by having the vision system recognize what's going on in the car and make adjustments and make everyone's lives better, like adjusting mirrors and adjusting seats and adjusting gameplay modes or whatever you want to think about. This doesn't seem nearly as earth shattering, but it is something that computer vision could be solving and it could make the lives of the drivers and the passengers in the car much, much nicer. Another option, and this sounds really far out until you think about it, is that Tesla could actually turn these people over to doing things like working on CRISPR and gene editing etc. In other words, Tesla could branch off and they could have some sort of skunk works division that was working on other AI projects that are really, really interesting and potentially life-changing. Now, that seems totally bizarre and against Tesla's mission statement, but ultimately, I don't know. <laughs> I think in some senses it makes more sense for them to keep this really, really good stable of AI researchers and let them do what they want rather than say like, well, we're done with this project and so you guys can go on and get hired at other companies. Because they'll go work for Ford or they'll go work for GM or they'll go work for Toyota or Volkswagen or whatever, or they'll do something else entirely, but they're not going to work for Tesla anymore for long because they are top tier and they know they're top tier. And not just that, of course, it's not just a sense of pride and silliness about that. It's that they really do want to change the the world and they're very motivated people and motivated people don't like to do second tier work like data wrangling and stuff. So I personally feel like Tesla is going to be at a crisis if they're not already. Internally they might already be at this crisis but if they're not they're going to be soon and Elon Musk and the whole company needs to really sit down and think about how to keep these AI researchers because they are worth their weight in gold. In fact more than that probably. So they need to keep them whatever the cost and I really hope that Elon Musk and Tesla and Andre Carpathy and all of the people at Tesla are thinking about this very, very long and seriously and come up with a good solution. Because otherwise, as the title says, Tesla really could become a victim of its own success. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and informative and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And if you enjoy this kind of stuff, please do consider subscribing. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you so much for your support. And today we have a new Patreon shout out. The shout out goes to M. Warger. Welcome and thank you so much. And of course, if you're interested in joining the team, just check out the link in the description. And don't forget about Webull, which is a stock and crypto trading platform. If you look in the description, you click on the link and open an account, you get one stock valued at up to $250. And if you fund the account with $100 or more, you get a second free stock valued at up to $1,600. So that is a fantastic deal. Check it out in the description. And of course, don't forget about our merch store, which has awesome t-shirts like Tesla Rockets for the People, Don't Mess with Tesla, other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description. And finally, Finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking a link and going shopping helps out the channel. Thank you. And in the meantime, please do feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.